Hi, I'm John with the Fossil Channel, and today I'm going to be going over a new piece of kit I got off of eBay. Uh, I won this for about $325, brand new, free shipping. It's called the Roadlink News Shooter Kit. So I have the Roadlink Filmmaker Kit, which consists of a receiver and a transceiver, and the News Shooter Kit is designed to integrate with this set here. What comes with it is the same exact receiver that you would find in a filmmaker kit with the 3.5 millimeter connections uh, and your channel options, the muting options, same OLED display, and same powering options where you would run it off of double A's or USB. And you have the same attenuation options and pairing options that you would find on a filmmaker kit. Overall, the same thing that you have in the filmmaker kit. What's different uh, about this transmitter versus, say, the one in the filmmaker kit, uh, obviously, is the size difference here. Uh, two is the XLR connector versus having only a 3.5 millimeter connector. This also has a 3.5 millimeter uh, input connector as well. Uh, this, they both can be powered by USB. However, uh, the other option that this has that this doesn't have in terms of powering is that this uses a MPF style uh, powering option, which these two poles are here. You can use uh, Sony MPF batteries in there and power this unit off the lithium ion batteries. With the transmitter, you cannot do that. It's just strictly either AA or USB powered. This also has that option of USB powered here. Uh, the other difference uh, with this is the inclusion of a 3.5 millimeter headphone monitoring jack, which the transmitter on the uh, filmmaker kit does not have. And then the uh, display on the transmitter, it just shows the uh, channel bank that you're using for the 2.4 gigahertz frequency bandwidth. Um, this one has a bigger display and displays a little bit more uh, options. Uh, there are a few more other differences as well, but I'm going to attempt to get this back on here with one hand here. There we go. Um, so in order to activate this unit, you're going to slide down the front panel, which is right here, and you can see that it has a bunch of buttons. If you want to pair this uh, unit, Instead of pushing the red button like you would on the RX or the uh, transmitter of the filmmaker kit, you would hold down these two. And in the top left corner, you would see a P pop up. And then you would go to your receiver and you would find a channel that you want to pair up with and you would push the red button and then they would sync up to that channel. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. You're going to hold down the center button. And it's going to activate my dynamic mic here. Um, so we have it engaged. And as you can see, I'm already paired up with channel two. I have a receiver already plugged into my mixer here on channel two. So you're probably getting audio from the uh, front of the microphone here. Um, these two buttons rotate the uh, options you could use in the menu system here. It's a simple select and push type driven menu. So if I want to switch around, I would push the center button to engage the menu selector. And from there, I can select fan volt power. I can go to the decibel increase or decrease. I can go to my headphone volume and change that. Uh, I have, have it set to 9 out of 11 uh, uh, increased. So if I want to change this to XLR to TRS, this is where I would do it. And I would switch that to the little TR, um, the 3.5 millimeter jack there, but I don't want to do that. So I'll disengage that. Uh, to turn off the display but keep the unit on, you would simply slide the door closed and the unit is still on and functioning. Uh, you do have a green indicator light up here to show that, that the unit is indeed on. Uh, it is kind of bright, so I don't know if you want to use this for, if you're using it for hidden purposes, you might want to put a little gaff tape on that to cover that light. Um, overall, it's a nice design. It's got aluminum texture here. It's got rubber sides here on the battery compartment and on the front. So if it does get banged, it has a little bit of a resiliency. Although I wouldn't want to drop this or bang it around much. Um, on the top here, you'll notice that there is a uh, locking three uh, XLR ring. Uh, uh, what do you call these things? It's a lock locking uh, system. So I would unscrew this and take off the mic uh, and put on a different XLR connection mic there. Um, I noticed that they gave uh, in the uh, kit here three different types of thickness rings to put in between here and the microphone. Uh, I suppose they believe that some microphones might not fit 
exactly onto the connector. And in order to prevent or reduce stress at this joint, uh, they included those O-rings to keep a little bit more of a rigidity or some kind of buffering system, I believe. That's what their intentions uh, appear to be according to the little diagram in the, in the package here. What also comes in the package is a Allen key screw to uh, unscrew this and I suppose make that looser or tighter. Uh, and then they give you a, what's really useful and practical is a case to put this into. Now this would go in the case and the top would stick out from here like I'm holding it right now. And you can access all the buttons and the slides within the case, which is very nice. Uh, the only thing I've noticed is that when it's in the case and you want to screw in a lavalier mic into the, uh, through the pouch here, you have to play around with this little spot here on the, on the case because it can be kind of difficult to screw it in. But it's just a little bit of maneuvering, that's all. Uh, the case is pretty durable. It's got decent texture and I believe it's some sort of fox leather. It's not real leather. Uh, at least from what I can tell. Uh, there's a clip on the back which is nice and strong and sturdy. Uh, if you do decide to use it like a lavalier system, this be aware that this will be upside down and, the, and it's designed like that on purpose. So it's not an, an error in any sort of way. It's just the way that they chose to design the unit. Um, what I like about this unit is that it does offer the headphone monitoring port. So if you're looking to maybe try wireless booming and if the situation calls for it, you can have your boom operator monitor the audio or just anybody who's using this transmitter to monitor their audio through the uh, headphone port to make sure that it's coming through. So it's a good way of uh, checking self-diagnostics and seeing where there might be an error on the signal chain or perhaps it's just another option that they offer you that they don't offer on the Filmmaker transmitter kit. Um, I feel like and in my opinion, that this is a more versatile piece of equipment, even though it's a little bit more expensive, uh, because one, it offers you an XLR connection. Two, it, it's able to phantom power uh, the XLR connector here, so you can con uh, connect condenser microphones. Uh, three, it's got different battery options here, so you can power it with double A's or um, USB or the Sony MPF style batteries. Um, for the, the display gives you more information on what's going on and especially when it comes to the XLR connection port you don't just get 0, 10, and 20 decibels of gain like you normally get with the transmitter side uh, the filmmaker kit you, on the XLR side you get up to 40 decibels of gain preamp gain with this unit here so that's that's quite the options uh, amount of options for this little transmitter if you do switch it to the uh, 3.5 millimeter input, you've only got the same amount of decibel gain as you would the Filmmaker kit here. So it's important to keep that, uh, important to note that with this unit. So overall, it's a decent uh, kit. It's rated the same amount of delay milliseconds as the Filmmaker kit. It's four milliseconds. It's also rated for 24 bit by 44.1 kilohertz. And the range is similar if not the same as the Filmmaker Kit transmission and reception. Um, that kind of varies obviously due to the environment, how many um, Wi-Fi routers are around the area, um, other electronic sources as well. Uh, so you have to take that into account to wherever you plan on using this wireless system, you gotta figure out how much, if it's worth the risk or not. So the 300 meter range is uh, presumably in line of sight in optimal conditions, uh, i.e. there's no signals around, it's straight to you and the, and, and the transmitter and, and the source, nothing's blocking it. When you, when you introduce other factors in there, it changes. So obviously you're not gonna get every single time 300 meters of range coverage with this unit. You're probably gonna get at most practically and reliably, and I would say safely, probably about 20 to 50 feet, um, depending on your location. And even that changes. So. Uh, this is the Rode New Shooter, uh, Rode Link New Shooter. Uh, very nice piece of kit here. I just want to turn down my uh, microphone here um, on my Audio Technica Pro 70 lavalier. I'm going to turn that down. And we're going to give you a microphone test using the Rode New Shooter right now. I'm talking right into it uh, about 45 degrees and about three to four inches from the microphone on my RE50B Electro Voice dynamic microphone. 
I'm at a setting of plus 30 decibels on the XLR connector port. And now this is me talking into the axis of the microphone. This is me talking into the axis at about six to eight inches away. This is me talking about 45 degrees into the axis, about six to eight inches away. So that is a little test. I'm talking into the axis again, about four to five inches away. I'm trying to avoid the uh, proximity effect. And that's what the uh, new shooter is transmitting right now with the dynamic microphone. So as you can hear, it's pretty clean audio. And I'm running a Sound Devices uh, 744T. That's where the uh, receiver is plugged in right now uh, at a line in. And uh, the settings I have right now are plus 15 decibels of gain on input one on my 744T. Uh, nothing else has been done uh, to the audio. Um, so this is a very flexible system and I look forward to using it uh, in a variety of different situations and seeing how flexible this unit really is. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, let me know.